Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, we've got a new GHB, a new season, and this one's going for 12 months until the end of third edition into fourth. So uh, AOS is looking pretty interesting. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, a lot to talk about, and I'm going to go into it. Uh, but to do that, I'm going to be painting this uh, Soulbite Vampire. Uh, it's one of those ones that I wanted to paint for a while, so I thought it would be really fun. We can uh, do some nice blue-green blends on it and uh, put it in with the rest of the, the lot that I've been painting here on the channel. I think that would be really cool. Uh, you know, Soulbite... Uh, are going to do really well in this season. Uh, this is a focus on wizards. Uh, we're going to go into it. it, it it's a pretty volatile one. It, there's a lot to, to cover. I'm just going to give some first impressions on it and uh, talk about it because, uh, yeah, this is going to be going on for a while and it's and it's going to definitely shake up the meta a lot uh, for those that play more competitive play. And, uh, yeah, yeah, really, really interesting. But I thought it'd be fun to talk about it and just get some first impressions out there and, uh, and discuss it a little bit. So uh, let's get uh, started, eh? So what are my first impressions? Well, you know, initially when we all saw the leaks and, you know, and this GHB has come out, uh, you know, it, I had mixed feelings on this. You know, you, you look at it from a, from a first pass and, and this season's GHB could seem uh, maybe not as great as it, as it, as it looks as you, as you dig a little deeper into it. Um, you know, it, it, had, it had a lot of, uh, I guess, when you look at it first, the, the battle tactics seem quite restrictive. The grand strats seem quite restrictive. You know, it initially uh, it's going to push you towards book battle tactics, so that's not great uh, because then you get more of a haves and have not situation. Certain armies will obviously have great uh, book battle tactics and grand strats, and other armies don't. And you know, coming as a storm stormcast player, uh, generally for at least competitive play uh, at the moment, anyway, um, you know that's not the best. Uh, but you know. And so that, that sort of makes it a little bit, okay, what's going on here? Then you look at the missions, and the missions are, are really interesting. There's a lot of really great ones in there, a lot of hits, and there's a few misses in there as well, but it's a, it's a really uh, mixed bag worth of missions, and all of them are requiring you to really think about what you're doing, and, and they're very, uh, uh, I guess, sort of lenient towards, let's say, uh, movement and aggressive builds and fast-moving armies and, and aggro-type uh, tactics. Uh, at least that's what it looks like on the surface and so you're 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 looking at that and you're thinking okay, okay well uh, I don't know whether I really like this too much and then the the emphasis on wizards and then you're okay do I have any casting or not you know and um, what's going on there and and so there's a lot to digest and so initially usually when you see something new like that you usually sort of back off from it and think oh no I, I don't want to do this and so that was my initial reaction to this season and, and there's a few good reasons for that that are a bit more le legitimate than just uh, you know a knee-jerk reaction to something new and we're going to go into some of those things and, and have a bit of a chat about it and, and just just get a sense of the season uh, we've had at least by now this video comes out there'll at least been a, a couple of tournaments around the world that have now uh, been using this this GHB and um, if you look in on, on some of those you'll see uh, what's been going well and what what hasn't and um, there's some really crazy uh, you know lists and and factions doing well right now I don't know how that's going to continue over the whole uh, 12 months but certainly there's some armies out there that could do with some tweaking to bring them in line to make this a bit more of a fun uh, season for everyone, right? Uh, but yeah, that's that's the initial impression is that, well, okay, this might have been a bit too much. And then we've got obviously the uh, GHB uh, season rules, so usually special rules that come in. So you've got your Antorian Locus, which is, um, you know, nine wound or less uh, heroes uh, that aren't mounted, um, you know, that, that, that become these Antorian Locusts. A bit like last season, right? Except that um, the differences here is that, you know, um, you're uh, not unique, obviously, and uh, they're the the battle tactics and so on aren't exactly tied to this it's like an additional step rather than it being tied to like in last season with the heroes uh, having to complete battle tactics now you've got uh, just the wizard keyword being used more and the Antorian locust thing is designed for you know the um, the command traits or artifacts and things that you give them and so there's a, there's sort of like a and there is at least one mission where you do score extra points for an Antorian locust but uh, generally on the whole it's been split into this sort of generalized key keyword term wizard and then this Antorian locus keyword. So this splitting of the keywords is is nice, and so you've got so you've got some positives here. So let's start with the positives and and go through it and, and sort of uh, see what's there. And and one thing that I've talked about before is that I 
that I prefer is uh, a more generalized use of a keyword when it comes to battle tactics and, and, and grand strats and so on. And they've done that here. So they've they've moved away from specific um, keyword locked uh, you know battle tactics to a very specific unit like a, a nine wound or less hero that's non-unique etc to complete that tactic and then broadened it to wizard. So that means that unique uh, models can do it. Larger unique uh, unique or non-unique um, wizards can can achieve these battle tactics. Uh, and, and that's a really positive step. It does broaden the number of units that can complete it and, and give you a bit more list variety. So you're not just locked into paying points for these, these little on foot heroes. Uh, you know, but you still can and there are reasons to do it. So with these non-unique on foot heroes, uh, wizards, you do have access to also a spell law. Uh, and so that's really interesting, which we'll go into in a second. But you know, just generally speaking, the broadening of that does does help in terms of completing these battle tactics. But it, it is a very um, a very focused season. You know, you're, you're having to do some very specific things. Uh, the, the the battle tactics are kind of uh, forcing you to, to be more broad across the board. You've got to do things like charge two units in and retreat two units, two different units, so four units all together in one turn. You know, um, charging a hero and a battle line unit in and 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 you know, keeping at least one of those within three of an enemy by the end. Uh, you know, you've got, which is relatively doable, you've got um, the, the charge two and retreat two is a little bit more tricky for some armies. Uh, you've got ones where you're going to be uh, putting three different units around the board edges, three different board edges, and two of them have to be outside your territory, etc. This is a, this is a, this is a kind of tricky one for some, you know. Um, so it's sort of spreading you uh, across the board. And then you've got ones to, uh, you know, um, successfully get a spell off without being dispelled over the course of your turn etc you've got um, a, a few wizard orientated ones there but but ultimately yeah, a lot of them at least half of them are kind of pushing you into a very aggressive movement and, and, and movement across the board. And this can be very problematic for a lot of builds, uh, gun lines, castle builds, defensive builds, things like that that don't want to be moving too much, or even just factions that don't have a lot of access to fast moving units. This also is, is true. Uh, they're, they're going to have a tough time with this. You know, um, This definitely promotes things like teleporting and, and uh, coming on from board edges, um, things like that. Anything that, that, that has a very, very fast movement rate uh, can achieve these and still be uh, active later in, in, in the combats. Uh, and so we're seeing, you know, a, a pretty difficult set of battle tactics there. So it's a rethinking of your army list, you know, coming at it with fresh eyes. And so for the most part, uh, these battle tactics are okay and you will be able to achieve them. Although I think that for a lot of the, the middle armies and the lower tier armies uh, that aren't, you know, really striking it hot this season, uh, you're probably looking at, you know, you'll be able to achieve three to four pretty regularly, and there's going to be one or two turns that are going to be up in the air. And that's 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 a, a bit tough for, for some armies. Uh, Stormcasts aren't quite in that category, but, uh, you know, their fifth battle tactic is going to be a little bit uh, dicey. You will have to really think about it and make sure that you pick it up. It's not going to be easy. Four of them you can definitely do. We have teleporting, etc. Uh, that makes a lot of these easier, but um, there is there is a, a turn where you're going to have to really think about how you're going to time that out. So the tempo of those of those battle tactics and which one goes first and so on and how you move through the through the game is very important. And that's going to be uh, more so for a lot of the lower tier armies. Those that have really good battle tactics don't even have to worry about this. You're going to have you'll be able to pick up maybe two or three of these on on the list, and the rest will come from your book. Uh, this is true of Soulblight, like the one that I'm painting in front of me here. Uh, Soulblight almost have their own GHB inside of their book. They've got like six battle tactics that are all achievable. At least five of them are easy to achieve and one of them's kind of situational, but still it's doable. So you have a broad range of battle tactics you can do. You have uh, grand strats, which are perfectly fine. Uh, so, you know, armies like that are just going to uh, not even, almost not even interact with the battle tactics and grand strats that are going on in this season. And, and that, that's a bit of a shame that they, that they don't restrict it more to uh, just using the book. I would have loved for a 12 month season to say, okay, just for this season, uh, you're only using GHB uh, battle tactics and grand strats. That would have been really interesting because like leveling that playing field and making everyone use the same ones, that would change things a lot for a lot of armies and 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 really make you think about how to use these because they are interesting. It's just that knowing that your opponent is going to get a gimme is uh, you know a gimme round is 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 uh, a little bit frustrating sometimes. Uh, you know one of my one of my closest friends plays Cruel Boys and uh, they've now got probably the oh, and 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 orcs have also got this as well. Um, you know 
know, the most gimme uh, tactic of all time. Just basically, it's more or less telling you when you set up, you're going to achieve two points, you know, for that round, uh, because you just have to have your units, um, you know, within three inches of terrain. So, you know, you've pretty much got that first turn. Uh, so you're only really worried about four turns of the game. And uh, that, that's great for them. And I'm happy that they've got it because that's a that's an awesome thing. Uh, but, you know, it'd be lovely if they pass that out, the, the, that candy out to more of the armies in the game, you know, that'd be nice. But anyway, we won't go into too much personal griping on that. Uh, but, you know, so then that moves us into, into grand strats. And with the grand strats, Again, they're quite restrictive. You're probably only going to be going for the Savant one, which is keep your wizard alive, or you're going to be going for the uh, the battle line one, which is kill all the battle line and keep yours alive. Your your starting battle line, right? So not summon not summon stuff, etc. So those two are probably the ones that you'll be um, oscillating between. Uh, the one where you have the wizards in the center is a very bad move. Uh, as I've alluded to, these missions are about movement, and uh, trying to do that by the end of the game is almost uh, near impossible. Can considering the kinds of things you're going to be up against. I doubt there's many armies that can achieve that, uh, but it maybe it's possible. And for those that are like non-wizard armies, then you have uh, the kill all the wizard one. And, and obviously the, the funny the funny one at the moment is, you know, if two corn players play each other, they get that grand strat for free, right? So uh, there, there's that sort of thing going on, uh, you know, but but on the whole, they're kind of, they're kind of restrictive and, and kind of difficult, right? Uh, it's not too bad for things like Stormcast. They can, they can keep a wizard alive. You just, you know, keep them out of the battle and so on, you know, a cheap Knight Zephyrus with an Arcane Tome can be teleporting around the battle and stay on the edges, and you know, it's only 100 points, uh, and you can achieve that. And that Knight, Nes Knight Zephyrus can actually do a lot for you. That little cheap 100 points is, is actually pretty effective. Uh, it can be used to get off a spell outside of um, Unbind range. You can then use it to do the Board Edge one. You can use it to do about three or four of the tactics can be achieved or helped to achieve with this 100 point uh, Knight Zephyrus with an Arcane Tome. Uh, that's a really interesting uh, thing for Stormcast and, and, it's, and it's very cost effective and since Stormcast work on efficiency that's a really uh, a good use of your 100 points uh, and you can even if you need to sacrifice him you know towards the end of the game to pick up a two point battle tactic for um, you know the, the, the reprisal one where you then kill the unit that killed your general so there's a lot there you could do with a Knight Zephyrus at 100 points to save yourself from uh, paying for a, a bigger wizard and go for a more sort of I guess anti-magic build where you take a lot of Exilors, you try to um, kill the opponent's wizards, uh, and then use this Knight Zephyrus to score your other tactics. Uh, with a few more teleports in there, maybe from uh, Vanguard Hunters or Paladors, you could achieve those tactics quite easily. And you play a very sort of uh, dance game, almost like playing Eldar, you know, in, in Warhammer 40k, a very sort of, or, or Harlequins, a very sort of uh, jump and fade sort of style, where you stay out of their, out of their combats, so don't get bogged down, move around the board, and just score your tactics as you need. Uh, and, and do it that way. So that's kind of interesting for, for Stormcast specifically. So how about these missions? So, you know, with the missions, uh, again, they're really interesting. You know, the Pulse, uh, I think, and I've forgotten the other name of the other one that has the six objectives on the angle. Uh, they're sort of sort of parallel to each other, but on angles. Uh, and, and you can only score for, for two turns, each each one. And, and after that, you can't score on that objective if you've done it consecutively for two turns. So you're trying to bait your opponent into taking it off you and then take it back again. That one and the Pulse, where it begins on one side and then, and then the Pulse moves across the objectives, the four objectives, objectives across the center of the table and you're um, scoring on that one two points and then one point either side uh, in addition to your battle tactics and one for holding one um, at all. So you're, I think the you can have about seven points in a round from turn two. Uh, turn one is a low scoring round and then you can actually score quite highly on the other rounds if you're really good, but it's moving all the time. So it's a really interesting one because you've got you to sort of hedge your bets and go in kind of central or at least or have enough of a force to go either side and then you're kind of traveling across or out or branching out depending on how the the pulse moves how you're going to like uh, combat that against your opponent so it's a really interesting one and definitely does not uh, favor things like uh, castle builds and gun lines and this sort of thing you're going to have to rethink how you're going to approach that because they're, they're definitely going to be in tournaments they're 100 percent going to be in a tournament because uh, i've watched them play now and they're, they're extremely interesting uh, volatile really makes you think uh, they're great for like sorting out the 
the the really the the the, the skilled players, right? Like to, to see who's going to really be on top. It really really uh, really does push that. So you've got that that sort of uh, mission there, and the other one, uh, which is again really interesting. So you're going to be uh, sort of like not grabbing your own objectives on your side. You're going to want to push to the center more and take those first, uh, then have those taken off you, and then take them back, etc. And then take your objectives, hopefully defending the middle, and then taking yours later in the game to give you something to score, so that you can score over the whole game. If you take them too early, then you're kind of screwed, or unless you've got a very aggro build that wants to be in, in your opponent's territory, uh, you're going to be sort of uh, stuck for an objective. So it's a really interesting one too. That really does require some thought and some pre-planning before you go into a tournament or into a competitive game like that. So th those two specifically stand out as, as very, very interesting games. Uh, but th there, are, there are a number in there that are like this. Almost all of them are pushing you to move and, and not really um, favoring a sort of more static uh, gameplay style. So that is going to require a, a, a rethinking of your list and, and generally how you how you approach the game. And as I said, armies like Stormcast and others that have access to teleports are going to be really crucial uh, because you are going to have to move. And for those that don't, are going to have to think about other, other, other units in their list that can actually move around and achieve these, these, uh, these goals. Unless you have good book battle tactics and then in which case you can kind of ignore it a little bit. But even then, you need to be scoring on the primary. So that's that's an important feature of this season. Uh, and, and, and then we come to the magic, which is like the really big uh, elephant in the room, you know. Um, and as many have said, uh, the anti-magic meta is definitely very strong this season with all the primal dice and the way that works. Um, you know, you're going to be uh, just for those, just briefly for those that don't know what that is, you, you both players are rolling a dice on a four up. Uh, you add a primal dice for each player. So that's a maximum of two uh, for each player. Uh, and, you know, and, and so on each, I think it's each, each, um, each battle round or each turn, uh, something like that anyway. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, you're going to be having, you know, probably on average one to two dice uh, extra to do your uh, your casting and unbinding. But there's no disadvantages for the unbinds, but there is for casting, so you can get primal miscasts. And this this does damage to you uh, and so on. So you've got to be careful with the casting, but there's no downsides to the to the miscast, to, to the um, to dispelling or the, the unbinding. So uh, you will save those to uh, block your opponent's uh, spells, right? Right? Uh, or save it for what is now a really dangerous spell, the Blizzard, and try to get off that 46 mortal wounds at close range with a really cheap wizard. Uh, so there, there's there's a few tactics there, and and, and it is uh, looking like a pretty brutal season for, for Magic generally, whether you're casting or trying to dispel. So I've watched a few games and seen the Blizzard go off, and it's uh, it's pretty devastating. You know, 46 mortal wounds is is crazy. I think that's what it is. Uh, and you know, uh, it, it's it is on a 12, and it is it is really you know strong. Uh, but with those extra primal dice, you can you can do it. There's other ways to increase primal dice. You've got the new um, battalion. So the this season comes with new battalions: the uh, the wizard one and the, uh, the the wizard hunting one. The wizard hunting one is probably not going to get used as much, so we won't talk about that too much here. Uh, although it is kind of nice. An extra extra attack against that wizard uh, for the units that are inside that battalion is nice, but really the one with the um, the the Antorian wizard one where you take you put a couple of wizards in it and then uh, you get uh, an extra roll for an, an extra primal dice right on a three up and that's really great. So if you want to increase uh, the number of dice you've got in that pool, uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the primal dice and how they work because it's very complicated uh, in terms of what how you how things like re rolls and and you know modifiers and so on work in relation to this. There are other channels that go into this a lot further, but essentially you've got these extra dice. And what that means is you can cast this 12-up uh, this, uh, spell, uh, which does this massive damage at close range. So armies that have really cheap wizards that want to just throw away a wizard at this spell and get it off uh, uh, get it off in, in close range, uh, really great, right? You're going to be doing just an enormous amount of damage. And for armies that already do a lot of mortal wound damage and a lot of big, big damage from spells, this is like icing on the cake. Uh, so things like Seraphim are just insanely good right now. I don't think this is going to last forever. They'll probably get nerfed. But um, at the moment, Seraphim have some really great ways to take advantage of all of this on top of their own magic, on top of their own summoning. It, it's pretty brutal, I'd say. So, you know, there are some armies out there that are going to really, really take advantage of all of this stuff. But, you know, uh, the middle tier armies and the lower armies also can take advantage. You know, that, that spell can be used on anyone. As I said, any cheap wizard can you can throw away to do this. And it's worth it, right? If that knocks 
knocks out their key hammer or their key unit, you, you've pretty much won the game. Uh, it can swing it massively. And as I said, with the missions uh, forcing you to move a lot, uh, nothing is assured. And so there's this sort of a sense of, of volatility going on this season, which, which wasn't really in the previous seasons, which I think is interesting. I don't know how great it is for the game or how much fun this is going to be over the course of 12 months. I personally prefer a, a six-month rotation. I think that that's uh, nicer because it means if they if the designers do make any mistakes, uh, you know, that they can be corrected quickly. Uh, when you've got a 12-month season, it's going to come down to Battle Scroll, like updates, you know, the, the, the changes and the FAQs and so on to do that. And, and as we've seen in the past, uh, GW can be a little bit hesitant to, to uh, go the whole way on those kinds of changes. They'll, they'll do a sort of minimal change, hesitantly, you know, do small changes when sometimes they need a little bit more more heavier, heavier go. Uh, however, this 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 um, this Battle Scroll update, the, the FAQ that they've done, uh, is probably the best one they've ever done. Just, you know, as a side note, um, on top of this GHB, we have that those changes and um, the points changes and the rule changes. Uh, we'll just touch on this. So uh, one other aspect that's impacting this GHB is, is that update and, and, and two specific things. We've got a change to Lookout Sir, which now means that, um, you know, your little uh, nine win or less uh, heroes, this includes uniques, um, now within three inches of, of, a, of a unit with three models uh, in your army, uh, can't be targeted at all outside of 12 inches. So you've got to get really close to target them and then you get the minus one to hit thing uh, like it was before. So there's now uh, more sort of safety for your small heroes and these buff pieces and your wizards to actually do this casting and do these different job roles. So um, that's a really massive change to the game for this season specifically, but just in general, there's no way to counter that. There's no sharpshooter battalion. There's nothing like that to um, to counter this. Uh, and so that's really going to be impacting this season and moving forward into, I guess, fourth edition. I'm assuming something like this exists in fourth edition. Uh, that's why it's here. Uh, something along these lines, uh, you know, and then you've got this, this other change, which is coherency. Thank God they've done it. So now it's uh, six or less models uh, get the good coherency and uh, seven or more models, uh, you know, uh, have the bad coherency. So what that means is that, you know, six or less, you only have to be within one inch of one other model uh, rather than two. And so that means units that come in threes can now can now reinforce to sixes and actually be uh, viable and effective and, and do things like string out in a line, uh, have whatever whatever combination of, of, of uh, you know, formation they want and, and be effective in the game. And so you, you've got uh, some different screens now for, for your army and some different ways to uh, project power, uh, to nav objectives, etc. And so that's those two things are really Really big, and they're going to affect the way people play across this season uh, dramatically, I think. So finally, what do I think? Well, look, we've got all these different factors. We've got uh, core rules changes, updates to different armies, nerfs, points changes. We've got uh, focuses on wizards, on dispelling and, and anti-wizard meta. We've got uh, really, really volatile and, and movement-based uh, missions. We've got some that are good, some that are bad. You know, we've got like a mix. Uh, we've got uh, these really restrictive battle tactics that are that are good for some armies and not for others, uh, pushing you to book battle tactics. We've got grand strats doing the same thing. Uh, you know, there's a there's a squeeze going on uh, overall, a, a pressure build up, right? And, and a lot of interesting new uh, meta changes and, and, and meta shifts uh, to which armies are going to be effective, etc. And some new armies that have come out that are very strong that are going to need to be pulled back in line or they're going to run away with the season uh, and you've got 12 months to sort this out and keep this going uh, so it's a really interesting time to have such a such a volatile and, and different kind of season and going for so long as I said I would personally prefer a shorter run for this because I feel like um, you know with fourth edition coming they're probably not going to be too worried about changing much you know they're going to be looking towards fourth edition uh, as a company and so uh, the chances that they're going to uh, lift or change or correct things as they go are probably minimal uh, because they're going to be looking looking for a, a bigger push for fourth edition. So I feel like that might happen with this season, and if that does, that'll be a bit of a shame for the end part of this season. But maybe not. They've done a really great start, as I said. Their battle score update uh, is one of the best they've ever done, and, and really addressed a lot of things that needed addressing. Uh, and so that's really great. If they do that again halfway through or towards the end, that'll be excellent. If they do another one like that, then we could see a really really good season. But if they fall, if they drop the bat a bit and they fall off a bit, uh, drop the ball, then uh, you know you might find that um, 
this season becomes a little bit grindy for some, right? For some of the lower tier armies. And I hope that doesn't happen because it is genuinely interesting. So I'm optimistic, but uh, yeah, I don't know exactly how well this is going to go for. I think six months of it is going to be great. Uh, the back end of six months leading into fourth edition, I'm not so sure. If they have some uh, sneaky little surprises for us, something new, something fresh to enliven the season, I think that'll be really nice. Uh, and, and I said another good Battle Scroll update where they, you know, update uh, the armies and adjust things again in a really rigorous way that'll make this season really cool uh, so yeah I won't waffle on any more on that as I said there's many other uh, YouTube creators uh, content creators out there that, that are going into this in more detail we'll probably revisit this again in another six months to see how that's going any major changes we'll definitely revisit it uh, I've got plenty more vampires to paint so we can we can get into that or stormcast uh, so that's all good so uh, having said that let's go and take a look and see how I've gone eh and there we go, one vampire all done. Let's take a look. So yeah, just a few thoughts on the new season, you know, and, and, and how it's looking for, for going forward. Uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be fun, but it is definitely, uh, you know, as I said, a volatile uh, set of rules, and it's definitely going to uh, push the meta a lot. Uh, but it's really, really going to be uh, interesting to see how it all pans out. So we'll definitely do another video in six months or, or so and, and, and have a bit of a chat about it and see if, you know, my views have changed or the pros and cons have changed, uh, which armies are doing well and which aren't. Uh, I'm definitely going to be playing around with the Soul Blight here and, uh, and and the Stormcast and seeing how I go with them. Uh, but it's it's going to be interesting, you know. If nothing else, it'll be an interesting time. I'm hoping it goes. It, it's interesting for the whole 12 months and just not uh, the first six. So we'll we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, but I'll leave a nice image of this one at the end, as I normally do in the paint list. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Please hit that like button, subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.